Good to have you here tonight. Hopefully I can show you some things that you could either benefit from by review or just learn something new or be uh, challenged to do something that you haven't done for a while. We had a question at the Make the Cut forum about how could you wrap text that goes has some on top and some on bottom around a basketball design. So I thought I would just show you how to do that. Now you, your text may be totally different and maybe your ball is a different design or a different, different ball or maybe you don't even want it to ball, be a ball, you want it to be a circle. You'd use these same techniques and there's always more than one way to do a project. So this is not the only way to do it, but I'm using Make the Cut, so we'll get started here. This is kind of one of the ways that I did this design. But I'm going to open up another page to show you how I did that. So to open a second page in a file, you click on the little page icon and add a new page. So we're going to start out blank here. And the first thing that I'm going to do is go to the Make the Cut form to get me a basketball. Not the form, but the gallery. You click on the gallery icon here. And as the search window comes up, you, I'm going to type basketball. S-K-E-T-E-A-L. And then click on descending. I want the newest ones first, and then search. So there are a number of different basketball things. I think I'll go to page five. I think that's where I found the one I wanted to use. Yep, there it is. This is simple one right here, basketball one. And I'll click on download. And that gives me a nice image of a basketball that is layered. Now, if you did not want a layered ball, you might want to pick something else, maybe like this one. If you were doing it in vinyl, you might be able to make this one work. But if you want to layer it, you can use this one. Now when I click on this, notice that when I click I can't select this. That's because this is locked. To unlock a locked design, go down to the lower right corner and click on the lock icon and go lock icon and select unlock all and that unlocks everything. What I'm going to do first is resize this to the three inches that she said she wanted it to be. There's a, a lock icon here. We're going to leave that on so that it resizes proportionally. So I type three and enter and now we have our three inch basketball and notice on the right that we have a circle on the bottom, a black circle, and then we have the pieces for the basketball layered on top of it. I'm going to click on the eye icon on the basketball, the, the brown color, to hide those so that we'll just work with, well, first I'll put it in the center of the page here, make it easier to work with, and I'm going to hide that part so that I can work with just the circle and now I'm ready to add the text. So I'm going to click on the upper right part of the screen, text and fonts, and she was wanting to use the freshman font, so I type F and then go down until I come to freshman. I believe this is a free font. I just found it in my collection, my massive font collection. Fresh. Freshman. No, I don't see it. Well, since I don't see it, I can click on this second T here and I can go to my folder that where I keep all my fonts and that one's under the F's, F fonts. I don't install everything and then when I do install it, I like to just install it and make the cut rather than install it in my font system my Windows systems fonts because 
I have so many it would slow down my system to a uh, snails. Okay, so I need freshmen. F R E And when you click on it you see the the font showing in the bottom window and if you want to install them permanently click on this box in the lower right corner and then click on open. So now Freshman is permanently installed in my Make the Cut software. So now that I have the font here I'm going to click on the, the T on the right hand side and you'll notice at the top of the add text window that I have selected split by glyphs and this is very important when you want to wrap text around a shape you need to split the, the text by glyphs the other options are no splitting split by lines or split by spaces and I set mine up always to split by glyphs just because that's how I most frequently use fonts is um, having them split so the text is Farmington and then I added some extra spaces in here travel basketball is what she wanted to use and I click on accept now I split these up because she wanted Farmington on top and she wanted the other text on the bottom well the first thing I'm going to do is resize this because as you can see it's 34 inches wide that's way too wide for this 3 inch circle for the letters to fit around it and in playing with it I found that if I used a, a width I'll change this to green a width of 9.4 and a height she said she wanted the complete design to be about 6 inches so I'll make the height at 1.5 inches and press enter because the 1.5 top and bottom adds 3 inches and the circle is 3 inches so we would have a 6 inch design. Now what I need to do is anything that we want to be right side up on the bottom we're going to flip and mirror so I'm going to click flip and I'm going to click mirror. These are the second and third icons on the bottom left toolbar from the second and third from the left. So now you see the text is upside down and backwards. Now I'm going to select all of it, hold my control key and drag this text over the circle that I want to wrap it to. Now we have the option to change the offset that's where the text is going to be starting and we want Farmington to be at the top. Then vertical alignment, I've set it 99%. If you slide this over to the right, the text comes away from the circle. If you slide it over to the left, it can go inside the circle or on the line about 50%. Sometimes that's what we want. But what we want right now is for the text to be outside the circle and barely overlapping so I use my arrow key to get the vertical alignment right at 99%. The next thing I need to do is change the spacing, adjust the spacing. And going to the right, it changes it to where I can't see all of the word travel. So I'm going to move this to the left until I see the T and the L kind of line up about the same. If I click this and then use my left arrow key or my right arrow key, I can change the spacing little by little until I get it exactly where I want or I can slide this over a little. And once I have the text where I want it and get it all fine-tuned with my arrows, then I can click on Accept. Farmington is kind of uh, a little bit off, but the bottom letters are fine. So I'm going to accept it. 
I could weld it right now, but I, I don't want to weld it because I want to change this top text a little bit. I'm going to click on it, and then I'm going to drag this curved arrow just a little bit to get this more lined up the way I want it to be with the F and the N being approximately the same height. Maybe a little more. You can tweak it how you want. So it looks right to you. And I just want it to be barely overlapping. So once I have it the way I want it, I'm going to select all just by dragging my mouse around it. And in the center of the bottom toolbar, there's a weld icon, or use Control W is the shortcut key, and I'll weld it all together. Now if I want to see what it's going to look like, I can add my basketball design, just opening up the layer, the eye on the, on the layer where the brown is. So when I cut it, I might want to cut this first, and then I can cut out of, I can hide the, the black, and I can cut my, my brown and layer it over the black and then put it on, she wanted to put it on a car window. But this would be the same technique that you use for putting any text around any object, and it works well. You might have to make adjustments in the width of your text and just play with different widths till you find what works for you.